Good afternoon, everyone. And welcome. Welcome, welcome. To First Baptist Church, Toronto. Both in sanctuary and online. God is good and his mercy endures forever. If you can, please stand for our opening song. God, I look to you. And in all you do, you look to him first. And things will fall into place. It may not be quick. It may not be easy. But it does. And he works it for his glory and for your good. Let us thank God I look to you. Let's look to him. In God I look to you. I won't be overwhelmed. Give me vision to see things like you do. God, I look to you. You're where my help comes from. Give me wisdom. You know just what to do. Let's sing that again. God, I look. In God, I look to you. I won't be overwhelmed. Give me vision to see things like you do. And God, I look to you. You're where my help comes from. Give me wisdom. You know just what to do.
Hallelujah. Amen. We sing, I love you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. Just want to say it's good to be back. Amen. Been gone for two weeks. Uh, a much needed break. And I was able to watch the service online. I won't tell you where I was. I might get jealous, but I saw that I'm no longer needed at the back. I can now sit here at the front until maybe somebody might, and I might, somebody back there might need a breakout fill in. But well done, my youth. We are very proud of you. And I just want to make mention of our stage. Look at this. Isn't that beautiful? Thanks to Pastor and I believe it was my dear wife, Sister Paulette, and Lorena, and so many others who helped. And Derek. And Derek. And Eldon. And Eldon. See, Pastor says if I mention names, don't forget anybody. So he's helping me out here. But wonderful job. But today we continue our Christmas season with the second advent of love. And we welcome Elder Alice Howe and Deacon Sharon Alice Brooks with a message of love. God's love to us and our love to one another as commanded by Christ. For he said, love your neighbor as yourself. We will also gather around the Holy Communion table and reflect on this love that emptied the cradle, emptied the cross, and now fills our hearts. Amen? Amen. 1 John 3.16 says, This is how we know what love is. Jesus laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. Let us pray. Hallelujah. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, yes. you are the creator of all things, and yes. we humble ourselves in thy presence, giving thanks that we can gather in unison to worship you. For you are worthy, worthy. of our praise. Yes. But we can't do nothing without your presence, Lord. So we... Invoke right now the Holy Spirit to come and enter this sanctuary to fill the hearts of your people so that they can be open to hear your message today. As we say, come, Holy Spirit, come and have your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.
I love you, I love you, Lord, today, because you came for me in such a special way, in such a special way. That's why I praise, why I praise you, I lift you up, I lift you up, and I magnify, and I magnify your name. Chorus. That's why my heart is filled with praise. From the top, I love you. Sing it again. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today. Because you cared for me in such a special way. That's why I praise. Come on, praise Him now. Sing it. I love you. It's the Ivan of love. I love you, Lord, today. Why? Because you care for me. Mm, come on, tell him now. In such a special way. That's why I bring you. Oh, I lift you up. And I lift you up. And I magnify. And I magnify you. Hallelujah. Did you come to worship God? Did you come to give Him His rightful due praises that is due unto Him? Did somebody have a victory this week? Did somebody wake up with their right mind this morning? Did somebody have food on their tables this day? Did somebody have clothes on their backs? Come on, did somebody have a roof above their heads? You've got reason to give God praise. Come on, give Him some praise. Come on, give Him some praise. He's worthy, He's worthy, He's worthy. Amen. He is worthy. We're going to read about love now. We have last is going to come and read for us. Thank you, sir. And he's going to read the whole idea of the advent of love. Amen. Thank you, sir. God bless you. Yep. Hang on a second. Nothing don't hold last back, right? Right? I don't know why he had to be six feet four. You know what I mean? Have me carrying him around in Africa. That's six foot. All right, I'm getting it now. That's fine. Yeah. I'll stand with him. Okay, he's going to read the white and uh, we read the yellow. Before I do that, good afternoon, friends. And Merry Christmas. It's... Uh, it's always good to be here in the house of the Lord. And, you know, we should all be happy that we woke up this morning, as Sister Sharon would say. And, you know, God has protected us. He has, you know, provided for us. And it's only fitting that we should be here to worship him. In, in Matthew 22, uh, verses 36 to 39, as we did in the Bible study this past Wednesday, 
uh, Jesus is always tested. And in this case, the Pharisees wanted to know which of the commandments were the, was the greatest. And Jesus said, you shall, love your, you shall love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest commandment of all. And the second is, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You know, coming up here, being assisted, is an act of love. You know, thank you, Sister Lorena. Thank you, Pastor Gibbs. Thank you, everyone, for your prayers. You know, every small thing that we do, saying hi to our neighbor, providing for the refugees, those are all acts of love. And with that in mind, I'll do the reading. If we speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but do not have love, we are only a resounding gong of a clanging cymbal. If we have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if we have faith that can move mountains, but, but do, do not, not have love, love, we are nothing. And, and if, if we, we give, give all we possess, possess to the poor, and, and give over our, our body, body to hardship, hardship that we may boast, but do not have love, we gain nothing. Love is patient, kind, does not envy, does not boast, love. Is, is not proud, love. love does not dishonor others, is not self-seeking, is not easily angered, Man. and keeps no record of wrongs, love. does not delight in evil, but rejoice with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies and tongues, they will cease, and where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. When we were children, we were like a child, we thought like a child. We reasoned like a child. But when we became adults, we put the ways of childhood behind us. So now we see only a reflection as, as in a mirror. mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now we know in part, and we shall know fully, even as he fully know. And now, Three remain, faith, faith, faith hope, 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 love, love. But the greatest of these is love. For God so loved that he gave his son, Jesus Christ the Lord. Shalom and amen. 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 You may have your seats. Thank you, Brother Lass, for reading amen and there's always a place for everyone here somebody say amen uh, we don't restrict who you are and what you are we just thank God that his grace is sufficient and enough for all of us happy second advent Merry Christmas everybody I hope that you will continue to celebrate the season with your friends and your families and your co-workers because we know joy to the world the Lord has come amen so we will continue on today and I just want to uh, acknowledge our leaders and our deacons for the Christmas season. They're all sharing in the services for the next couple of Sundays. Last week we had a powerful message of hope. And today you'll hear one of love from both our elder Alice and our deacon Sharon. So prepare your hearts for that. Uh, no pun intended. Um, <laughs> but let love abound today. So God bless you as we announce just a few things briefly for you. Um, the first thing I want to say is in, in front of you, you would notice there is a bit of a handout that looks like this, all right? Uh, I, I'm making a special appeal to all of you because we have given so much to refugee issues, the needs in our community. We want to give more and more and more. So for those of you who are sitting there, you can grab one of these, give it to a friend, take it home, or, or ask me for more copies. There's more copies in the back table. 
Give us an offering, especially for the Christmas season, towards missions, all right? Whatever that might be. And uh, I challenge you just to give a little extra this season for us, for our missions endeavors. There's a QR code on there now. Put on the screen, please. There's a QR code on there now. Notice that? So if you just click on the QR code, it takes you right to our website that you can allow to give through PayPal and other means. It'll tell you the basic information there. So you can click on the code and you can give through that means, or you can just write a check or you can just give cash, put it in the envelope in the back of your pews there. And any offerings or tithes that you want to give, you're welcome to do so just behind the pews in front of you is there. There's a box in the back, you can put it there as well. And if for some reason we've missed you because you have you moved or you have a new address or you want to give us your birthday uh, or your email address, the bottom half, you can tear off the bottom half Give it to an usher, put your name, your phone number, your email address, and we have your basic information as well. We do a broadcast email every week, and maybe you want to be added to that as well, so we can submit that to you as well. So thank you so much. Uh, pay attention to this. Father, we just pray a blessing in this season, the most painful season of the year, though it's the most joyful of your son Jesus coming. Hope, love, joy, peace. Yes, many are suffering. Many don't have the basic needs. And many are hurting, Lord, and we thank you for this ministry, for the way we all give to the cause. And may we find in our hearts to give a little extra so we can bless those who are less fortunate than we are. We thank you for your faithfulness to us as we are faithful to you in our giving. Bless us, we pray, in all our financial challenges. And may you, Lord, give us a gratitude of thanks for your blessing every day. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Thank you so much for your faithfulness this coming Wednesday. We continue our prayer and Bible study. Uh, just let you know the 13th is going to be our potluck. All right, so bring a dish on the 13th, but the next two, the next, next week's Wednesday, we'll have a regular Bible study on, on, on Zoom, but on the 13th, we're having an in-sanctuary service, okay? So we're going to be downstairs in the basement from 7 o'clock on the 13th. I hope if you watch us online and for all of you that you can join us for this one little Christmas get-together for our potluck on Wednesday night. And uh, it's Ask the Pastor Anything, so prepare thyself to come and ask me any question you so desire, all right? Okay, and the next sun, since it's Saturday, we're going to resume our steel pan training. So if you are in that steel pan presentation, uh, see you next Saturday at 9.30, all right? 9.30 a.m. is our steel pan. We continue on, and hopefully we'll be ready to do something at Christmas. We'll see. Uh, I don't know. We'll see how we're doing, okay? The Bible does say make a joyful noise, but I think we're emphasizing more on the noise than the joyful. So... Uh, <laughs> Uh, somebody pray for us, please. All right. All right. And then the Sunday next. And oh, by the way, and the Saturday also, I didn't get the time. What time are we coming for the children? Does anybody know? Is it at noon? Okay, maybe we can find out. But on Saturday is going to be the children's uh, dress rehearsal for their program on Sunday morning service. So if you have a child and you would have been communicated to as a parent, you will know to bring your child here. And they're going to be here for a few hours. All right, um, so hopefully they'll all be here to prepare. Now you see the scene behind me, right? Notice what's missing? What's missing behind the scene? What's missing? Baby Jesus is missing. He hasn't arrived yet. We got to wait till the 25th, right? Now he might come next Sunday with the children as a premature, uh, you know, appearance. Okay, but, uh, but the scene is wonderful. It's just a little tease for what's to come next Sunday with our children. Uh, and that's our, our wonderful, stable, stable uh, scenery right now. So there's no room going to be at First Baptist Church next week either. So we will have to have a stable for him. Anybody agree with me? All right, because there was no room in the inn either, was there? Uh, but there was room in the stable, right? Ready for the cradle, all right? So looking forward to that. So next week, Sunday, God's willing, let's prepare for our wonderful children's program. It's called The Best Gift. And we'll find out what that is. And the following Sunday is going to be our, our almost said seniors, it's going to be our FBC choir, FBC choir presentation. The following Sunday, the 17th, and looking forward to them ministering to us as well. And there is a, 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 a clipboard in the back area for seniors. Did we say 60 plus? I think we did, All right? So uh, somebody challenged me this week. They says, Pastor, you know, when you were 55, you said 55 plus. Now you're 60 plus. He says 60 plus. What's going on, Pastor? 
Well, you keep raising the you keep raising the age as you get older, Pastor. Something is wrong here. Well, no, that's not the plan. Okay, honestly, honestly, okay. But however, it's for 60 plus, and uh, you're welcome to come on the 21st at 12 o'clock noon. We're gonna have a couple of surprises, sing some carols, and have a wonderful seniors lunch like we normally do. We haven't had it since COVID, so here we're gonna have it again this year. So looking forward to join us. Join us, please. Okay, dress in your red. We want the basement decorated in red, dressed in red, okay? I see Elder B smiling at me. She, I've seen her in red, and she's all ready. All right, all right. And Queensway Cathedral is having their own Christmas program. It's a live program that they put on a presentation. I always encourage you to go because it is a wonderful expression in a professional way of the wonderful Christmas story. So if you can go, it's Friday, December the 8th, the 9th, and the 10th. Saturday, Sunday, uh, sa Friday, Saturday, Sunday next week. If you want more information, you can ask us about that. And then on the 15th, I want to encourage you as well. That's the Dominion Church International is having a production for Christmas. And of course, that's where all the refugees are, that they house refugees since July of this year. So they're going to convert the bedroom that is now that it was a sanctuary is going to come back into a sanctuary and they're going to have a presentation and they want the community to come and see the space and be part of the refugees as well. So I hope to be there, but if you can join us, please do so. Uh, if you want more information, let me know. But uh, the address is 2256 Shepherd Avenue, just close to Western Road there. All right, so hope we can see you there as well. All right, that's it for now. And let's just uh, announce some wonderful birthdays as we normally do. All right, so, so Leah Brielle Izzard, that's uh, our minister Rotina's granddaughter. Uh, it's her birthday. Today is the third, yes? So it's today, so if they're watching, happy birthday. All right, and then Ovi, AG is here. I think I saw her come in, did she come in? Ovi is here. Ovi, why are you being shy? Raise your hands real high, it's your birthday. Woo! Hey, it, on the seventh is her birthday, and Priestley, I don't know Priestley, they moved as well, but Priestley is, Anouk is on the seventh also. And another one who's celebrating on the seventh is Lawrence. Now you're gonna ask me, who is Lawrence? Lawrence Chevaldeoff, am I saying it right? Close. Well, he, he, I know he's watching the service. He watches the service from Vancouver, him and his wife all the time. We traveled to Rwanda a few years back with him. And that's Lorena's dad, our wonderful executive assistant. That's Lorena's, yeah. And he turns 85 on the 7th. So I'm looking through this lens and I'm saying to you, my brother Lawrence, happy birthday to you as well. And then Eli Choppy, all the way. What did I say? Oh, I, did I miss? Oh, Zaeja, is she here? Yes, she is. I thought I saw her. Yeah, she did come in. I saw that. Zaya, raise your hands high too. Come on. Yay! It's her birthday on the 9th, next Saturday. Yay! Wow. And then Eli Choppy is also on the 9th. Uh, that's Ivan and uh, Elizabeth's uh, son. He's on the 9th. Did I miss a birthday or an anniversary this week? This week? Going once, going twice? If you're here for the first time, raise your hands real high at me here for the first time. Great to have you. Hope you got the little package. But... Welcome to First Baptist Church, amen. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. One more time. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. All right, happy birthday to you. And, and it is Communion Sunday, all right, and we're going to go to prayer uh, very shortly. And let me light the candles as we do. Uh, come uh, and lead us, uh, praise team. Uh, what did we light last week? You remember? The Advent of? Oh, well, let's do this. Let's do this one right here. This is the Advent of Hope. So we light these candles every year as the world recognizes, you know, and I had a big debate this week about, I don't celebrate Christmas and all this stuff. And I said, that's fine with you. But just so you know, two thirds of the world's population celebrate Christmas. That's a whole lot of people believing in this Jesus. Somebody say, amen. You, you can deny it all you want and you can come to my country here who believes in Jesus and deny it all you want. But I know this, that Jesus Christ is real. Amen. Yes. And he's no longer in the cradle. He's no longer on the cross. No. He's no longer in the tomb. No. Come on, somebody. He's alive and well. Amen. He's alive and well. Amen. So he brings hope. And what does he bring next? He brings love. And we light the candle of love today because it is the goodness of God. Let's sing. I love you, Lord. 
for your mercy never fails me oh yes all my days, all my days. i've been held in your hands oh. from the moment that i wake about that song it says no matter how far you run where you go Hallelujah. where you hide mm -mm. he's gonna come running after you yes, yes. <laughs> goodness, isn't that good Hallelujah. amen mm. hallelujah you know Adam and Eve did the same thing they sinned and they went hiding I'm telling you oh yeah they covered up themselves and they were hiding. I could imagine they behind the trees oh 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 God is coming now <laughs> you know and they and, and guess what he did he didn't just not come down and you know rebuke them he just came down like he normally does no matter what you're exposing your lives to no matter how bad you might have been and what you've done the grace of God is sufficient to forgive you and God comes after you just to allow a little conviction to let you know you know what you've done wrong or you made a mistake or disobey me a little bit but guess what I am able to do through the cross and communion to run after you and forgive you but you've got to be willing to submit yourselves amen 
and you've got to be willing to say Lord forgive me and help me in my destitute situation to trust you in this moment anyone like that this week in that destitute circumstance and situation God is still running after you no matter what Thank it is you. amen and I feel very saddened today to report that there's more war back in the Middle East again they had a seven-day rest and here they are again some I think they said a hundred people within the last couple of few days got killed already and we can talk about it because it ain't my family it ain't my cousin it ain't my mother they far away from Canada so too bad for them and that's how the world thinks until it comes home to you and if we don't think like that then we are not followers of Christ because I believe that God and Jesus are bleeding in their hearts for those who are losing their lives. They might not be your cousin, but they are a child of God. They might not be your parent, but they are a child of God. And God cares for every human being. No matter what the excuse might be. And I just feel saddened in my heart. I really do. I really do. What a world. What a world to live in today. But we have hope. Amen. We have the hope. And we have the love. Put up our slide and let's pray for peace. Don't stop praying for peace. It might not come now, but don't stop praying until the last line, the Prince of Peace comes. Let's say together. We pray for peace in the Middle East. We pray for peace in our world. We pray for peace in our nations. We pray for peace in our cities. We pray for peace in our homes. We pray for peace in our hearts. We pray for the Prince of Peace to come. Amen. Next week, we're going to flip it around. Because the message really is, where does the peace come from? It comes from inside first. Maybe that's why the world don't understand this. Amen. And there's ones who've lost loved ones. I'm, I'm doing a funeral service for a family who lost their mom, grandma, in 2017. And I was there with the mom then. The mom passed away. I'm burying her tomorrow for this family, the Jones family. And for all of us who can attest through the Christmas season, reflecting on the losses we've experienced as well. And for those who are sick and shut in, we're praying for those like Sister Pat Williams and others, uh, Sister Euler is back. Uh, we missed her for a couple of weeks as well in this virus flu season. It's, for some reason, if you got the flu with a cough, it's still COVID. If you're sniffling and something is running and you feel lazy, it's COVID. You know what I mean? So it's okay. And Sister Cassie is home sick as well under the same circumstances. We haven't seen Natasha. We miss all these ones who you haven't seen. Just call them by name, all right? But we just pray. I don't, I don't see even Elder Clary here today. I don't see him either, right? So this, when you see folks missing around you, just pray for them as well, amen? But I pray for you. I pray for you who are here today and you who are online, that you'll be a beacon of hope and love to the world God has placed you in. Amen. Father, we just invite your presence and thank you for this wonderful service today. For those watching online, I pray a blessing in the homes. For those in sanctuary, bless us here as we gather in fellowship. We recognize that we can't do anything without you, so we need your abiding grace. We need your guiding love in our hearts, and we need your peace to reign in us. But Father, we need you to touch us in our bodies, in our minds, in our spirits, because we are ailing in every side. We live in fear, we live in doubt. There is war around us, there is poverty around us, there is hate around us. So we recognize that we need your grace stepping out of our homes every day of our lives. As we go to and fro, let us honestly, Lord, be your ambassadors. Put on that smile for Jesus and let the world know that you are the Prince of Peace. For this reason, you are the season, Lord. And we ask you to touch those in sick beds, those who are shut in hospitals and wherever they may be, in faraway lands, in far countries. We bless them in the name of Jesus, Father, today. Those who have lost loved ones, for your comfort to be with them as well. And let us continue in this moment of reflection of what Christ has done for us through Holy Communion. And we will partake together very shortly, Lord, to honor, honor the salvation that we have in Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior and our soon coming King. We bless us now in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. 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 You may have your seats. Let's continue on. We're going to have some more time to reflect and we pray later on. Amen. I forgot to get a bio from uh, 
Elder Alice and Deacon Sharon. Oh, she said, oh, I need to know she's a child of God. Is that good enough for you? Now, I was debating on doing communion first, but I think I'll have them speak first, and then we'll lead into communion, all right? Because they are talking about the avid of love, all right? So, Elder Alice, how long have you been with us in First Baptist? 30 some, odd years. 30 some odd years. Okay, so you stop counting. Okay, come. So, Elder Alice Howe has been with us for over 30 something years. As you all know, she's a poet, and sometimes she doesn't know it. <laughs> But we're going to have her come and share on the avenue of love. We love her dearly. Uh, she's one of the ones responsible with Deacon Eula for sending out cards. If someone has lost, is, has lost a loved one, one of our members uh, has passed away, they send out cards automatically. If somebody had a birthday that is a senior, we send out cards as well to them. Uh, and they make me look good because people come to me and say, Pastor, thank you for that card. And I says, yes, you're so welcome. We were, <laughs> yes, we were thinking of you highly. But they keep on track. Once they're here, they keep on track. So thank you so much for your, for your ministry here and everything else you've done for the last 30-something years. But today is your day to share with us what God has placed in your heart. Amen. So welcome. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm going to share with you what is love, God's love. <clears throat> 2,000 years ago, and during, during that segment of time, a remarkable, a most remarkable event occurred. God became man. While the creatures of earth walked unaware, divinity Divinity arrived. Heaven, heaven opened herself and placed, placed her most, her most precious one in the womb of a human. No one can define love without defining God. No one can explain love without explaining God, and God can only be defined or explained in Jesus Christ. Love is and always has been a complex concept. Humanity has always, always struggled to define love and is constantly redefining it. But God's definition, God's definition will Ever, ever change. 1 Corinthians 13, 4, 8 tells us that love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It is not proud. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. Keeps no record of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. Love never fails. God is the essence of love. Jesus is the reason, the reason we even know what love is. In laying down his life for us, he taught us everything everything we need to know about true love. Love is self-sacrificing, generous, unending, not, temporary, not a temporary feeling or attraction. Because of God's love for the world, we know that love, love is also undeserving and often unreciprocated. The Greek word for spiritual love is agape, the love of God or Christ for humankind, love in its most profound and pure form, unconditional, divine, selfless. God showed his love among us, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. 
the greatest expression of God's love is communicated to us in John 3, 16. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. In love, God does not force himself on anyone, but because of the conviction of the Holy Spirit, we respond to his love. In love, God shows kindness to all. In love, Jesus did not covet what others had, living a humble life without complaining. In love, Jesus willingly, willingly obeyed his Father in heaven. The world must learn that I love the Father and that I do exactly what my Father has commanded me. John 14, 31. In love, Jesus was, is, always looking out for the interests of others. Love is an attribute of God. Love is a core aspect of God's character his person. God is in no sense, in no sense in conflict with his holiness, righteousness, justice, or even his wrath. God's attributes are in perfect harmony. Everything that God does is loving, just as everything, everything he does is right. God is the perfect the perfect example of true love. God has given those who received his son as their personal savior the ability to love, to love as he does, through the power of the Holy Spirit. John 1.12, 1 John 3, 1, 23 and 24. And just, just as an example of what God's true love is, you and I, you and I are here today. Matthew 22, 37 to 39 tells us, love the Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This, this is the first and the greatest commandment. And the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. Whatever, whatever our faith in Christ compels us to do, there is nothing, nothing greater than to show our love, for love reveals the heart of our Heavenly Father. Oh, it's easy. It's so easy to be sidetracked by lesser things, but the focus, the focus must remain on the greatest thing, loving God. That in turn enables us to love one another. John 13, 34, 35 tells us that while addressing the disciples at the Last Supper, Jesus said, a new command I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you. By this, all men all men will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. The height of our love for God is indicated by the depth of our love for one another. God bless. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Elder Alice. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I tried to get out of this, but it didn't happen. So um, before I start, I just want to give you a quick definition of love. And it's defined as a strong affection for another arising out of a kingship or personal ties or sometimes just like minds. And there were four types of love. Elder Alice talked about the agape love, the perfect love of God for us. There's also Ophelia, that's friendship. Eros, that's the central romantic type of love. 
and storge, that's the love for family. So um, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. You know, as I was getting things together, and for weeks I'm jotting down as I study, I read, and then just yesterday, um, I think the Spirit spoke to me, and I think these are the words he wanted you to hear today. So as he laid it on me, I will lay it on you. Okay, so I'm going from my notes. So Elder Alice just spoke the greatest commandments as found in Matthew 22, 37 to 39. A similar verse is found in Luke 10, 27. Both verses talk about loving the Lord our God with our entire being. And then once that's done, to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. I found it very interesting that both commandments mentioned love. God is many awesome things and powerful things, but our focus today will be on his agape love for us. God is love. Okay, so um, I was thinking and thinking, and then I'm like, because of his great for love for us, what should our response be to that love? So that response for such a great love that God has for us is for us in turn to love him with our entire beings. When you love someone, you trust them. You want to have a relationship with them. You think about them. You call them. You pray for them. You pray with them. So I will focus on three things out of those. Trust in God, prayer, and relationship. Okay, so this is what God wants from us. First, we should put our trust in him. And faith and trust, they go together. Faith is trusting and believing that something will happen. So if I say faith, I mean trust. So as Proverbs 3, 5 to 6 says, and I know a lot of you know it, trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Some um, versions say he will make your path straight. So sometimes we go down winding roads, but we need to trust in the Lord, and he will make those paths path straight. So um, we are to trust him more than we trust our friends because he is trustworthy and he is true. You can call on him at any time. And he is there for you. He will show us the way if we would only put our trust in him. The story found in Mark 5, from verse 21 to 36, I'm not going to read all of it. We see two people of great faith. Mark says that Jesus was by the sea and a multitude came to him. And among them was Jairus. He was the leader of the synagogue. He fell at Jesus' feet. And he asked Jesus to go lay his hand on his sick daughter. His 12-year-old daughter was sick. Jairus, his great faith, his great trust, he believed that if Jesus would just touch his daughter, she will be healed. This man really had strong faith. And on his way to Jairus' house, he encountered a woman, which interestingly, she was sick for 12 years. She had a bleeding issue for 12 years. Lady, ladies, now think about it. <laughs> think about it. We complained for two, three days, maybe five, but for 12 years, this poor woman, 
And you know, woman, when she is bleeding, she's unclean, so she cannot be among people. So this poor woman must have been felt so isolated. And she came out. And I don't think women are allowed to touch men. But she said, oh, she said, if I but touch the hem of his garment, I will be healed. That is great faith. And immediately, she was healed. And Jesus told her, go, my daughter, and be healed. You are healed. Our trust in God must be like this. He is our God, and when we cry out to him in our affliction, in our pain, he hears us, and he is able to do far more than we can imagine. For those who need healing today, you are sick, your heart is broken, your mind is messed up, just call out to him. You have faith in the Father. He is there for you. So call him in the name of Jesus. He who hears you, he will answer. Not in your time. So be patient and wait. He, God also wants to spend time with us. He wants us to get to know him, to know who he is. And the more you get to know him, the more you get to love him. He loves it when we spend time in fellowship and worship with him daily. As children of God, we need this intimacy. Because if you're in a relationship and you don't call the person you say you love, you don't hang out with the person you say you love, what kind of relationship is that? That's not an intimate, that's not a good relationship. So let's, within ourselves, find time each day to talk to God, to hang out with him. As Asaph said in Psalm 73, 28, it is good for me to draw near to God that I may declare your works, O Lord. And James 4, 8 tells us to draw near to God and he will draw near to us. It says, cleanse your hands, you sinners. We're sinners. But when we draw near to him, he forgives us. And purify your hearts, you double-minded. So we need to choose. Is it God we want or the world we want? We don't want to be double-minded. We want a single focus, and it is Jesus Christ. And verse 10 tells us, we are to humble ourselves in the sight of God, and he will lift us up. Matthew 11, 28 says, come on to me, you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and l learn from me, for I am gentle. He is gentle in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, Jesus says, and my burden is light. Don't carry your burden. Give it to him. So if you are struggling today, if you are tired with the storms in your life, Jesus is calling you today. Come to me and give me your burdens. Don't go home with them. Come to him and give it to them. So now we're gonna go to the Gospels. In the life of Jesus, we see that he always found time to pray to his Father. In Matthew 14, 23, it tells us that after Jesus had fed the 5,000, he sent them away. Then he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. Jesus kept a very close relationship with his father. He talked to his father about everything. So we need to talk to our God about everything. No matter how small you think it is, tell it to him. No matter how big you think it is, tell it to him. He is greater than all your problems. Mark 11:35 also tells us that Jesus, he woke up early. And he went to a solitary place to pray in the Garden of Gethsemane. Before he went to the cross, he was earnestly speaking to his father. He drew strength from speaking to his father. 
we are to be like Jesus in this regard and take time away from our busy lives to read God's word, listen to what he has to say, and pray to our Father in heaven because he hears us. Our time with God changes our unlook on life and gives us the strength to keep going. And the second commandment was like the first. So we are to love our neighbors as ourselves. We must first love ourselves before we can love anyone else. We must love the person God created us to be and not say negative, negative things about ourselves. We are created in the image of God. And God makes no mistakes. 1 Peter 2.9 tells us that we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that we should show forth the praises of him who called us out of our darkness into his marvelous light. Psalms 139, 13 to 14 tells us that God created our inmost being. He knew you even before one thought of your parents that you should be born. He knew you and he chose you. So act like you know who you are. We are fearfully and wonderfully made by God. So once we believe these things about ourselves, we can then love our neighbors. And as pastor said on Wednesday night, who is your neighbor? Who is your neighbor? He said, everyone that you encounter is your neighbor. So a kind word, a kind thought, a smile even, a cup of coffee, anything you can give, and you can bring joy to someone. And that's love. In the world we now live in, with so much turmoil and uncertainty, we see the war in the Middle East, the war in Ukraine. We see bad things happening in our brother countries and sister countries. The constant thing, the one constant thing that we have is God's love for us. And this should stabilize us and everything around us that is whirling out of control. When we, I'm almost done, when we walk the talk and live out God's message of love, we create a community like First Baptist community. We create a community of faith. We then become God's voice, his hands, his feet, his light for each other. So loving others require much more than our good intentions and our well wishes. James 2, 16 to 17 said, puts it this way. It says, if you say to someone in need, go in peace, keep warm and well fed. But if you do nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? It is no good. We live love when we visit the sick. We give food to the hungry. We give shelter to the homeless. And as we've done, give coats to those in need. Give water, give diapers, give food to the community. We are living out God's love. So we need to get into the trenches and help those in need. Not just wish them well. Get in and lend a helping hand. These are difficult times to respond with, there are some difficult times to respond in love. And we know we've all had people just try to cause us so much trouble. And we just want to speak, not a kind word, but a harsh word. Let us think about it and say, what would Jesus do? And respond in his love. So I will conclude with some verses of love. They are self-explanatory. So listen to it. You can go home and read it. 1 Corinthians 13 is titled, The Greatest Gift. And this is the chapter on love. It tells us that though we can do many great things, but if we do not have love, all the things we do, it profits us nothing. 
As Elder Alice already mentioned, love is patient. It is kind. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things, and love, it never fails. And Brother Last read it also. Colossians 3.14 says, Above all, clothe yourself, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God, and knowing not God. I mixed up two verses. Colossians 3.14 says, Above all, clothe yourself with love, which binds them all together in perfect harmony. And 1 John 4, 7 said, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loves is born of God and knows God. And verse 13 of 1 Corinthians concludes this way, And now abides faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. So let us go forth today and vow to love our God first with our entire being and the second to love our neighbors as ourselves. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor um, Sharon and Pastor Alice. A lot of pastors in this church threatening my job. All right. Did you receive it? Yeah. Did you receive it? I did too as well. And, you know, we're having some chats with all of them to try and help guide us through this stuff. And we're talking about the advent of love. How many of you love? Why did you put your hand up? That's an easy answer, right? I didn't ask you what you love, who you love, how you love, right? So how many of you love? Everybody put your hand up because, yeah, we all, yeah. But how many of you love the guy who is stinky breath coming up to you on the street and asking you for a dime? It's a different question, isn't it? Everybody loves. So God, so God is love, yes? So we just heard from the passages that was expressed to us how much God is love. But how did God prove his love? If God just said he loves, it would mean nothing. Isn't that true? You know, I, I met Roselle some 37 years ago, and I told her I love her some month later. And then some two years later, I decided to put a ring on it. <laughs> but if I just kept telling her, I love you, I love you, I love you, but I never picked her up at work, I never took her for a nice dinner, I never called her and whispered nothing at her, all right? Well, sweet nothing, okay, my apologies. It's been a long time, baby. I don't have to call you anymore. <laughs> If I didn't do all those things, if I, didn't, if I didn't put a ring to prove that love, if I didn't live with her, if I didn't, if I didn't have children with her, she wouldn't know I love her. God could say he loves me all he wants. But if he didn't provide an escape from my persecution and sin that I was doomed for hell, I wouldn't know what love is. If God didn't somehow protect me from the evil and allow me to understand his grace, then his love would mean nothing to me. So the whole teaching we have today is not just because of the word agape, but just like last week, God is love, that's the noun. But our responsibility is to live the verb. We have to be loving to others. I think it's 1 John chapters 4, verse 20. It says, how can you say you love God? But who you see, who you cannot see. How can you say you love God who you cannot see? Right? But hate the one who you see. I see you. Peekaboo. Awesome, isn't it? Did you receive the message? I, I wanted to make a point first from Elder Alice. Elder Alice, I had a point written down here. You said something very uniquely, and, and I like it because you used the word on. Love is undeserving and unacceptable. Isn't that true? I didn't deserve God's love, right? And I didn't deserve for God to accept me as his son. So that's the qualification of love. 
compared to us who are to be loving to others as well. So I wanted to make that point because that means that, I remember the message I spoke a few years ago? That means love is a one-way street. You don't give love to get love back. God didn't say, you know, Wendell and, 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 and First Baptist Church, I'm going to love you so long as you can love me back. No. God look at you in your sinful, wretched nest that you are, Deacon Eula, huh? and, you, and you call yourself a deacon, and what a sinner you is. Amen. And Minister Kevin, you are some big minister in this church, but look at the filth that you have lived in your life that nobody's exposed to but God. Okay, let's make it personal now. What about me, your pastor? I better be careful. I might get fired when I'm done with this one. <laughs> but I am a sinner only saved by grace. Wretched man that I am. I think Paul said it this way. I am the chief of sinners. Amen? And I am not escaped from any of that sinfulness. So I'm undeserving of it, right? But it's a one-way street. But God says, I look down and he sees your faults and loves you anyways. And then I wanted to make, and then share, amen, amen. And then Sharon, your point as well in, in emphasizing the word trust in Proverbs 3, verses 3 and 5. I thought you were going to go there, but you didn't. I really thought you were going to go there. But last Wednesday, most of you were on the call last Wednesday. But remember, the word in, in, in Matthew 22 and in Mark 12, that great command, if you put it up on the slide, you'll see it there. That great commandment we have is one and two. The first one is what? Is to love your God. That's the easy part. Isn't that easy? How many of you love God? Every day of my life, I love God. Man, I can tell you guys, I really, really love God, right? But do I really love my neighbor as myself. Mm, that's a tough one. You know what I mean, Darlene? Well, I took my neighbor's mail. Yeah. Because, so, so that's an expression of love. So, so, so you're trying to be like Jesus, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what about you, Adigum? You know what it's like to love your neighbor as yourself, eh? You, you drive uh, cars all around and pick up people here and there, and everybody who comes in your car, you love them to death, don't you? Let's not answer that question, right? Because... <laughs> But you get the point, because we go into malls, we go into our workplaces, and people do stuff to us, and, and irk us in a funny way, and, and hurt us a certain way, and we, and we pass judgment, don't we? In the secrets of our heart, we kind of say, mm -hmm. don't we, right? And then we come to church, hallelujah, the goodness of God, yeah, yeah, I love you, Lord. You know? But yesterday, were you loving? Were you loving? Your neighbor as yourself. The verb, the action, were you loving as God expects us to love the way he loves us? Ah, let's do communion because if it wasn't for this, if it wasn't for this, we would never know what love is. Isn't that true? What an awesome God he is. Isn't he awesome? Go, go to the next slide. I love this picture. This is what Martin Luther King Jr. said. Uh, you know, he's had his faults. If you read his bio, you would know he made mistakes in life. But what a powerful man that taught the whole world in the 60s how to love people no matter who they are, what they are, what color of their skin is. He taught him that. And look what he says. He says, hatred paralyzes life. It sure does. Love does what? Love releases it. Hatred confuses life. Love does what? It harmonizes it. Huh? And what does hatred do? It darkens life. But what does love do? Illuminates. Illuminates. Amen. I guarantee you, you walk the streets of Toronto where it is the most diverse city in the world, and you watch people dressed a funny way in long gabs and short gabs. Some of them wear turbans. Some of them wear big, long beards. And we pass judgment because they don't look like us. They don't look Canadian. But I guarantee you this much. You walk by any of them and you put a smile on your face. And guess what you get back in return? Do it. Do it. Show me some teeth. I want to see your teeth. Show me some teeth. Show me some... She's trying to get it. You can show me some teeth to the world when you put a smile on your face. When you put a smile on your face. Amen? And that's what God wants of us. And I imagine that... God, go to the next slide. What Jesus did for this, he's smiling on us... He's smiling on us because of his agape love. Hallelujah, 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 right? And look at where the cross is. It's surrounded by a heart. It's the heart of God's love to all of us, all right? 
My leaders, come and let us lead our communion time to wrap it up. Minister Kevin is going to come and read a passage for us. 1 Corinthians chapters 11. He's going to read the famous passage for us in preparation for communion today. And uh, deacons or whoever is serving communion, come on up. Don't walk so slow. Come on. Come quickly and prepare yourselves. Amen. Hallelujah. I'll be reading 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 to 34. And it reads from the King James Version. For I, I have received of the Lord. <clears throat> Excuse me. I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. Mm -hmm. And when he had given thanks, he brake it. Right. And said... Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do shew the Lord's death till he comes. Till he comes. Wherefore, Wherefore, whoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, you hear that word? Unworthily. You know, sometimes we take this word unworthily out of context. You see, Paul, at that time, was addressing issues in that time. He was talking about those who will fill their bellies with the food in the house and while others were going hungry. You're not worthy to take communion if you're doing things like that. He's not saying that if you're a sinner, you can't take communion. If that was the case, we, none of us could take communion. Right? So don't think that you're unworthy. If you love God and if you know him, you can take communion. For we are all sinners. So just don't think because you sinned this week you can't take communion. You have an opportunity to say, God, forgive me. Because today I want to take of your, your body and drink mm. of your blood. It says, but let a man examine himself. So let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Uh -huh. That's all you got to do. Examine yourself. Ask him for forgiveness. Because if you eat and drink unworthily, you eat and drink damnation to yourself. Uh -huh. Not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep, die. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brother, when you come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye come not together unto condemnation. And the rest will I set in order when I come. Amen. Amen. So who's worthy? If you didn't feed the poor, if you didn't clothe the naked, if you didn't shelter the destitute, that's what Paul was talking about. But we are all a sinners. Judas was a sinner. Yes. He was a sinner before he sat down for the Last Supper. 
Jesus knew all about his sinfulness. And yet he embraced him at the table. So even if you think you've done wrong this week, you're welcome at the table of forgiveness. Amen? And I pray that you will join us today in this holy, holy communion service. We're going to distribute the emblems and prepare our hearts for it. So examine yourself, all right? Not so much for us, but examine yourself for God. And let God see that you are seeking His salvation through these emblems today, the broken body of Jesus, the shed blood of Jesus, that we have forgiveness of our own sins and our worthiness. Amen. I'm forgiven. Come praise team and stand with me and let's sing our song. I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. I'm accepted. You were condemned. I'm alive and well, spirit is within me, cause you died and rose again. From the top, I'm forgiven, I'm forgiven, cause you were forsaken, you were forsaken, I'm accepted, I'm accepted. you were condemned. Sing it again, amazing love, amazing love. How can it be? How can it be that you, my King, would die for me? That you, my King, would die for me. Amazing love, amazing love. I know it's true. It's my joy to honor you. It's my joy to honor you. I'm forgiven. I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. And I'm accepted. You were condemned. I'm alive and well. The Spirit is within me because you died and rose again. Downstairs is good as well. Okay. The stage is good.
The word is very clear. Minister Kevin just read the passage in 1 Corinthians 13, but I love to remind you, you have to go to the book of the Gospels, especially Luke 22, my favorite, where Jesus introduces the idea of the supper. We humans, we made it into a, into a, what they say, the sacrament of the church, where we turned it into a, a doctrine of the church, rightfully so, by Paul in 1 Corinthians. He starts it off in the book of Acts. When the church is gathered, they would gather for a Passover meal. And that's how we followed Jesus. So if you read 1 Corinthians 11, he says, I pass on to you, which I pass on to you, which was passed on to me from Jesus in the Gospels. And so we do the same thing. Every church of Jesus Christ practices Holy Communion. But it's not that he's still on the cross is to remember and reflect what this has done to give us life and life eternal, amen? And the word says, the night he was betrayed, he took bread just like this. Well, it would have been mats of bread, okay? With no leaven. And you would have broken it just like this. Sorry, our, our custodian, Kevin, uh, Dennis. But he broke the bread just like this. And he says, take, eat as often as you do. Father, we just bless these emblems in the name of this very same Jesus Christ who sh whose broken body and shed blood offers us eternal salvation. As we eat and partake and we drink, we pray that you will let healing flow, let grace and mercy flow, let deliverance flow, let peace reign, let us be victorious and conquerors according to what your word says in Romans, Lord, and Philippians. And we are more than conquerors through Christ who strengthens us through the death and resurrection of the power in his broken body and shed blood. We thank you in Jesus' name. And he says, take, eat as often as you do in remembrance of me. We don't rush it down. We don't chew it fast. We chew it slowly and reflect on this broken body of Jesus. Let us partake together. manner also he would take the cup Kevin come closer I was accused for drinking the most juice on communion Sundays I would imagine that Jesus would have drank the rest when he, when he passed it as well. But he said, this is the cup of the new covenant. My shed blood replaces you having to do what? Look for a cow, look for a goat, look for some animal to sacrifice for your sins. Shed blood once and for all. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah to the blood of Jesus. Amen. The blood of Jesus that washes me white as snow. He says the new covenant poured out for you. Look, I assume that when he was on the cross, it was pouring like that. Off his forehead. From his hands and his feet. From his side. Can you catch it on camera? It wasn't just spattering. It would have been pouring from his shed blood in his body amen and it fills your cup now spiritually speaking it fills your cup as you partake you will have life and life abundantly life eternal that's the hope of glory that we have according to romans 13 15. the hope of glory amen and we say thank you jesus sip it slowly i know it's not a lot but make it last long Slip it slowly and you ponder and think what you're partaking of. Let's take together in Jesus' name.
Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Is God a good God? Let's sing our last song. Somebody tell me, go tell it under. By the way, we got calendars for next year, First Baptist calendars, okay? Please don't take one for your uncle, your auntie, your cousin, your friend, your daughter, your cousin, your granddaughter. Please, please, it's one per family, one per household, okay? Leave them behind, and if we have extras, we'll give it to you, but one per household, okay? So, if you stole some last week, bring it back. No, I'm only kidding. God forgive you, you just took communion, okay? God forgive you, all right? But one per household, amen, thank you all. And you, this is for you, why? Because you gave. You gave and you allow us to pay for these things so we can be blessed of what God is doing, amen. Let's stand and sing our last song. Go tell it on the mountain, come on. Tell it on the mountain. Over the hills. Over the hills and everywhere. Go, go tell it on the mountain. to have the joy of the Lord in your heart. Amen. No matter what's going on, go make the world a better place. Amen. Amen. So go have a strong week and not a... God bless you as you go. Amen. The Lord bless you. Amen. Over the hills and everywhere Go tell it on the mountain That Jesus Christ is born Why don't you go Wonderful baby dedication after service. If you want to stick around, we're going to dedicate Bim Peace baby and a wonderful husband, okay? God bless you.